Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. Now today is something of a departure. It's not a style observation or a review video. Today, something a little more light-hearted. I'm going to tell you, or share with you, the 10 things, style-related, mostly, that I don't think I would like to live without. Uh, just to give you an idea of the things which I think are invaluable in my style collection. And I'd like you to think along with me at this, because when I choose something that I think is really important and I couldn't live without, if you have a different view, imagine what you would like to uh, not live without too. Now, I'm going to start from head to toe, and at the very top, the hat. What hat do I not think I could live without? And I'm going to choose a classic, and here it is. The workhorse of the men's hat world, the Trilby. Of course, the Trilby is a hat which is very versatile, can be pressed into service in daily use, you know, just wearing perhaps an overcoat or even uh, you know, a, a, a sports jacket. You don't have to wear an outer garment to wear a trilby because it's not like many of the more formal men's hats. Things like a bowler hat or a homburg or even a fedora to a degree. Because the trilby is, you know, quite modest in its stature, it's not too big, it's not too overbearing. I believe it's a hat which you can wear in many, many situations. Particularly, you know, if they're made of wool or felt like the one I'm wearing, keeps the head nice and warm, keeps the head dry, without being too domineering in any situation. Yet, ultimately, a lot more stylish than a flat cap or even that eponymous baseball cap which seems to be creeping into every level of hat wearing these days. So for me, if I could choose one hat that I couldn't live without, it's the Trilby. Now, moving down the body, outerwear, your coat. What do you think a gentleman with an interest in style would choose? I know what you're thinking, the dress overcoat. But no, that is not the one coat I would choose for the rest of my life. It would be the barber waxed jacket. Because I think, to, or I say barber, it could be any wax jacket. I'm, I'm only using barber as a brand decision there because that's one which I always wear. But you know what, if you bump into me in the cooler, wetter months of the year, chances are I'm actually going to be wearing a barber jacket, not a wool or cashmere overcoat, which is a lot more stylish, actually a lot warmer. But for me, that barber jacket wins because it's versatile. It's a chameleon of a jacket, which you can wear with, you know, jeans and a t-shirt underneath it, or equally, you could wear it with a three-piece suit. It has that class-busting ability of being worn in any situation, in the city in London, and on the backs of a farmer labouring in the fields in Somerset where I live. So for that reason, it is the wax jacket, specifically the barber wax jacket, which I'll be choosing as the one outer coat which I take forward into my item that I can't live without. Now you need something to wear under that barber jacket. And I think every gentleman needs some form of dress jacket. There will be a situation in your life, be it a job interview, uh, a wedding, a special event, or just you want to upgrade your style, where you need to wear some form of more smart dress jacket. What would I choose? Is it going to be the tweed jacket like I'm wearing? No, it could be, but actually for me, the one jacket which is that Swiss Army jacket, which I can use in so many different occasions, it's got to be the navy blazer. Women often refer to their little black dress as the thing that they wear when they can't decide or, you know, make a decision on what else to wear. For me, it's the navy blazer. Again, it's chameleon nature is the reason why I'm attracted to that blazer. The single-breasted navy blazer is perhaps the most versatile dress jacket a man can own. It can be worn with jeans in a sort of casual format. It can be worn with chinos in a semi-formal format. Or with grey flannel slacks, it's an 
equal to a suit in most situations. So that navy blazer is just so useful to have in the wardrobe. It's something that I couldn't imagine having in the collection and it's one of my 10 items that I just can't live without. Okay, so now we're moving. It's like peeling an onion, this. We're looking at the next layer down. And for me, the bottom layer has got to be the white dress shirt. All right, there may be other different patterns and different shirts out there which you could choose, but the white dress shirt is perfect. Absolutely perfect, because it'll never go out of fashion. All right, whatever you do, your white dress shirt is always going to be appropriate. And it is wearable across so many different levels of formality and the spectrum of your clothing that you can imagine. Let's think, you know, if you, if you wear just the white dress shirt, open collared, um, untucked from your trousers you've, and sleeves rolled up, you've got an, a very casual look. If you tuck that shirt into your trousers, a level of formality has just increased. If you put a jacket over that shirt, you know, in a pair of chinos, you've got semi-formal, you know, um, dressed on Friday in the office. You put a tie on that white shirt with that navy blazer with a pair of chinos and you're smart enough to go into pretty much any situation. So that's the beauty of the white dress shirt. It is that neutral blank canvas to everything that you choose to wear it and it's always going to be appropriate for whatever situation you find yourself in. From the very, very casual, let's be honest, you can wear that same dress shirt with your tuxedo, your, your, uh, your dinner jacket, to a formal event with your um, bow tie and nobody's going to know any different. It's just something which is always going to work for you in any situation and as a result, that's the shirt that I'm choosing for my 10 items that I can't live without. Now, moving down the body to the trousers, there's a few that I could have picked. You know, the grey flannel slacks, very practical, very utilitarian. But the trousers which I wear most of the time, and the one which I really couldn't live without, and I'm wearing them right now, it is the khaki chino trouser. Again, because it's so versatile, you can wear it absolutely dressed down with a t-shirt or as I am now with a tweed jacket or with that navy blazer you know it is so wearable all of the time and of course because it's not a formal trouser so to speak you know you don't have to worry about that sharp crease down the front of the trousers for me it's the perfect alternative to wearing denim jeans or grey flannel slacks it just covers the bases and for that reason the chino trouser is my choice. Okay, we're still moving down the body and we've arrived at the feet. An important area because, you know, as a shoe aficionado, it's gonna be really tough for me to choose one pair of shoes that I'm gonna take forward as a pair that I just couldn't live without. And after a lot of thought and a lot of, you know, changes of mind, I've set upon a shoe and I have it here today. It is, of course, it has to be, doesn't it? The brown wingtip brogue. Now I don't care if it's an Oxford lacing or a Derby lacing, this is a Derby, but I've chosen the brown wingtip brogue for a number of reasons. The colour, brown. Brown, it's not like black. Black is very formal, you know, black, formal, it's great for those more formal situations, but it doesn't lend itself very well at all to anything other quite serious dressing situations. The brown though, because brown comes in many different shades and tints and styles and colours, brown allows you much more leeway in the situation that you wear it in. Brown of course, a brown brogue like this, can easily be worn with a pair of jeans, a pair of chinos, a pair of grey flannel slacks, even a navy blue suit in a less formal situation, you know, your brown brogue can be worn. Why brogue? I love the wingtip brogue because it has texture. It has something of interest to look at. Now I like the black, uh, so the cap toe shoe because it's stylish, it allows you to get a, a mirror shine and you know, it's, yes, it is more formal. That's its, that's its downfall. The limitations of where and how you can wear it. But the brown wingtip brogue, particularly 
on a rubber, rubber sole. There's a day-night sole on this shoe. That means it's great for the winter time as well as the summer time. I do love a leather sole for your ultimately very stylish situations, but the rubber sole, again, it's all about versatility. This shoe will allow me to walk the streets of the city and the countryside at the same time, in the same level of comfort, in the same level of style. And that's why it is the brown wingtip brogue, which is my shoe of choice. Now we're gonna move on to the accessories. A lot more personal choice involved here. Everybody's got different taste. And for me, it's now time to think about what wristwatch I would choose if I could only choose one watch for my collection in perpetuity. And it didn't take me a long time to set upon my decision. And it's the watch I'm wearing today. It is in fact my Rolex Submariner. Now I've got a few nice watches in my collection. So why have I chosen the Submariner? Well, it's again the versatility. You know, I've often said to myself, if there was a zombie apocalypse, which of my watches would be the one I would grab knowing it would be rough enough, tough enough, yet smart enough to face the world out there. And it's the Sub, because the Rolex Submariner has that rugged toughness that will, you know, you know, with 300 meter, 1,000 feet of water resistance, it's gonna have no problems with getting wet. And it, it's tough enough for pretty much any other situation. But at the same time, thanks to, you know, the great Commander James Bond, who wore his Rolex Submariner with his dinner jacket, his tuxedo, and in any situation, uh, it means that the wearing of the Sub is socially acceptable with a suit, with your casual attire, also with your you know, your shorts on the beach, uh, in any situation you can find yourself in. So for that reason, it's the Submariner, which is the one watch of all of the watches out there, which is coming with me as the watch I can't live without. Now the next area is fragrances. And this is a tough one because I don't think I can choose just one fragrance here because you have warm weather ones and cool weather ones. So I'm making two choices, but under the heading of the fragrance I can't live without. So, for the warmer months, my signature summer fragrance is Dunhill Edition. It is a citrus, zesty, lovely, fresh and crispy fragrance, which is the fragrance that I choose pretty much every summer day because it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel clean and zingy. That's what you want in the summer months fresh and clean. The winter months though, a different thing entirely, of course. We need something a bit more dense, a bit more sophisticated, with a bit more power. And for me, there can be no better choice than Floris number 89. It has definite sophistication. It's got a sort of gentleman's um, club fragrance to it you know it's got the fragrance of old we know it's been around a good while it's often rumored you know not even true really but to be the choice of uh, James Bond although that's never been said in the literary or the movie world we know it was a choice of Ian Fleming uh, who created Bond but again you know it's chic it's got that real oldie gentleman's essence to it and that's why I'd be choosing this as my winter fragrance of choice. So Dunhill Edition for the summertime, Floris 89 for the winter. Now I'm getting to those periphery accessories, which are not really essential, but they're the things that make life something special. And for me, my accessory of choice that I would choose in the next category to take with me is something I can't live without. And for me, that's going to be unlined leather gloves. Bizarre as it sounds, right? I love wearing unlined leather gloves because they are a wonderfully luxurious item to wear. Being not lined, you feel the leather against your skin and it is something which just 
works for me in the autumn, the winter and the spring. I like to have warm hands. I suffer with a rare condition called Renard's disease, which is a circulatory condition of the extremities of the body. So I like to keep my hands nice and warm. And the unlined leather glove means, you know, it's something which works in pretty much three seasons of the year. And uh, yeah, this is my choice for that last accessory, which is coming with me. I can't live without it. Now rounding off my 10 items that I can't live without, I kind of run out of style matters. So I decided to give you a bit of a personal choice here. And I thought to myself, whilst I'm thinking about items that I can't live without in the style world, what items wouldn't I live, wouldn't I like to live without in other elements of my life? And I thought, if I could choose one drink, one drink only to go forward into my world and nothing else, it would be, and it's a bit disappointing this, right? Because a lot of people will think that is nothing special. And it is Canadian Club whiskey. Now, I know, right, this is just a blended whiskey. It's nothing special. It's not a single malt scotch or anything like that. But I actually am not a huge fan of elite scotches or whiskies. I like a simple, mellow whiskey. And Canadian Club being just a blended whiskey, it's not exceptionally strong. It's not exceptionally flavoursome. I find it mellow, mild and really enjoyable with just some uh, soda water and some ice. That is the drink which I can't live without. It busts through stress. It helps me relax. It helps me chill out. And this is the drink that I'm taking. What would you choose? So there we are, chaps. You've heard my 10 items that I can't live without, but here's a bit of a bonus. You're gonna need something to carry it all in. And for me, the one item which I will love to have as a piece of luggage is a leather valise, because a leather bag is something which gets better with the passing of time. It can double as a, as a briefcase. It can double as a weekend bag. It is just so versatile. Leather raises the sophistication of pretty much everything. And for me, if I'm going to choose something, I've got to carry all of these accessories around with, as I have done today. It is going to be my leather valise. So there we go. Those are the 10 items that I don't think I could live without if I had a choice. What are the things in those categories that you can't live without? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video today on this somewhat unusual uh, little topic. And uh, if you have, do me the honor of giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber to the Chaps Guide channel, click that red button and come on the journey with me towards Chap Nirvana. So, until the next time, now I'm in the woods with a bottle of Canadian Club. God knows what's going to happen next, but it's going to be fun. So, take care of yourselves, and I will see you again very soon.